Hey everyone, Mike here. I'm gonna try to take a quick plant video for my cell phone, so excuse any quality issues with sound or shaky video. Um, I'm out here on a power line in the open sun, and I've got behind me a nice big patch of true juniper. Let's switch the camera angle. Juniper is an evergreen, it's a shrub. This isn't going to get tall. Um, it kind of looks like cedar. If you can see the bark in there, it's got like long, strippy, uh, striped kind of bark. It's pretty aromatic. And one unique feature that I always think is cool to point out, if you can see down here, what's the matter, lady? Got a bug on you? If you can see down here, you got these little juniper berries. And when you crush them and smell them, they're very aromatic. One of their popular uses in what, if you are somebody that uh, drinks gin, you'll notice that smell very distinct. This is a classic ingredient for gin. It's growing in the open sunlight. This would not be growing under any canopy. It's always gonna be out in the open along the edge. Doesn't get very tall, maybe four or five feet. Usually it's really low and sprawling. I think it's pretty salt tolerant. You'll find it along the coast. Where I am in central Maine, it's more found in isolated patches. And I don't think it gets into northern Maine that much, but I'm sure you can find it up there. Um, like I was just saying, it's salt tolerant. So finding it along the coast, perhaps you could have this for human use, you could probably plant this along road edges to prevent uh, winter salt runoff from uh, spoiling your soil or maybe killing other salt sensitive plants. Craft beer in Maine, as well as across the country, has been growing rapidly over the last two to three decades. I think it's up to 18% of the market share. Um, that's scary for big beer, which has been consolidating into only a few companies. So their strategy now, first they mocked it. Uh, I remember this maybe four or five years ago. They made a commercial sort of mocking craft, uh, local craft drinkers as like mustachioed hipster beer snobs. And sure, those are a contingent of the community, but there's a lot of people that just like supporting good local ingredients and good local companies with great beer. But what I was about to say was first they mocked it and then literally the next year they're advertising. I'm talking about like big guys like AB InBev, the guys who, the Brazilian company that owns Budweiser. Then they imitated it. The next year their Super Bowl commercial was all about making Budweiser look really rustic, artisanal process. When I'm pretty sure Budweiser's just like rice beer. But then, like they always say, there's the famous saying, first they ignore you, then they make fun of you and attack you then they try to co-opt you. So the last part of their strategy was to just buy out local beer companies. Like uh, a famous one is Goose Island. That was a pretty popular beer company uh, that got bought out, I think by Budweiser, by AB InBev. But analog I bring up the craft beer thing because following the path of craft beer is uh, craft liquor or craft hard alcohol, craft spirits. I'm not sure what the exact term might be. But they're a growing portion now, so while craft breweries keep popping up every week, uh, craft spirits is a smaller but trailing niche, so perhaps it could be useful to you. Um, maybe worth checking out. So this one was a new one for me, and it took a close inspection to make sure I could figure out exactly what species it is. It's something in the genus Viburnum, of which there are many in Maine. So we'll probably see more in this series, as there are many flowering right now, in late June. You'll see some resemblance to the elderberry from the previous episode, and in fact they belong to the same family, something called Adoxaceae. It's a small family of flowering plants that consists of about five genera and about 150 to 200 species. The viburnum and elders are both shrubs, but elders have compound leaves, while viburnums have simple leaves. That's kind of a mini lesson that we've probably gone over before with previous plants, um, but is worth exploring again. 
This is Viburnum dentatum. That Latin name dentatum kind of refers to the toothy edges of these leaves. It's also known as southern arrowwood or arrowwood viburnum, also known as roughish arrowwood. It's a small shrub native to the eastern United States and Canada from Maine south to northern Florida and eastern Texas. Like most viburnum, it has opposite, simple leaves and fruit in berry-like droops. The foliage turns yellow to red in late fall, and you can find localized variations of this plant common over its entire geographic range. The plant hosts many different moth larvae, while the flowers attract a diverse amount of pollinators. The fruits or berries, which contain 41.3% fat, are a good food source for many types of songbirds. If you're following this series and learning plants for edible or primitive skills uses, you'll probably be interested to learn that the common name of arrowwood indicates its historic use among tribes as a source of arrow shafts due to the straight, supple shoots. There's a lot of primitive skills videos out there on YouTube, and while that may be something I delve into in the future, this series was more directed towards developing a basic environmental familiarity that allows you to bridge out into the direction you feel most called to, whether that's flowers, foods, medicines, practical tools or crafts, and more.